All right, in our final video of this series, we are going to talk about proxies. Uh, proxies are really cool, really powerful. Um, and so basically, they allow you to handle overrides um, or custom behavior for all the basic operations that you would do on an object. So like uh, when you try to access a key, when you try to set a key, when you try to enumerate, all sorts of things like that. So basically, they allow you to kind of tap in um, and make these custom handlers for when you're messing around with something like an object. So let's take a look at an example. Uh, we're just going to override the getter of objects, basically. So when you try to get something from an object, we're going to uh, do a little override. Let's just check out what that looks like. So first thing you want to do is you want to uh, identify your handler. And handlers for proxies, and we're going to see what they're like. This can be named anything, but they're an object. Um, and you have a bunch of different things that you can tap into. So for today, we're going to tap into get, but you could tap into set or enumerate, any sorts of things like that. Uh, so that's a key of get, and it accepts a function. And the function has the target, which is like the, let's say, the object that you're calling it on, the proxy you're calling it on. And then it has a name, which is, in this case, the thing that we're searching for. So we're going to be like uh, looking for our object.foobar or something like that. Then foobar will be the name, and the object will be the target. Uh, and so basically what you can do is you can put all sorts of custom logic in here. Um, so we could do something like, okay, if uh, the name that you're looking for is actually in the proxy, so if name is in target, uh, go ahead and why don't you return it, target name. Um, but then you can say something like else, you know, if it's not in there, uh, why don't you return, you know, for now this is contrived, but um, we can return an error, something like that. And so what's pretty cool now is you can take this handler and you can make a new proxy. So var p equals new proxy. Uh, and it takes in an object. We'll give it a blank one for now, but you could pass in whatever you want. And then it takes in its handler, which we conveniently named handler up here. So now we've got this proxy. So you can do things on it like a regular object, right? You could do like p.foo equals bar. And you could do p.bar equals baz. Anything like that that you want. All the normal operations are still there. Um, keep in mind, if instead of overriding get, we overrode set, then we could have custom logic in here. So when you're dealing with proxies, you can put your custom logic anywhere, but we don't have any there. Um, so then you can go ahead and console.log p.foo and p.bar. And just like we'd expect, bar and baz. So it's really important, like, you won't necessarily know you're invoking this custom logic, right? Because uh, that happens in the handler. Not You don't do anything fancy like proxy.set or anything like that. It's just normal uh, object notation. So then let's show an example. If we go ahead and look for something that's not there, like console.log p.foobar, something like that, boom, we get back this error. So this is a really simple example. You can do all sorts of cool things with this, but basically like, you get all these different properties that you're allowed to now override the logic behind. Um, so you can override things like uh, get, set, delete, uh, apply, construct, um, get prototype of. You can do all sorts of really dangerous things with this. But for the most part, I, I use these a lot to have um, objects that are really safe, like safe retrieval. So if you wanted to, um, you know, instead of returning, uh, throwing an error when you try to um, access something here. Uh, like, for example, what we could do is just return the target itself, right? And so now um, you could kind of have this like safe way of checking. Um, uh, so, the, okay, let me back up for a second. So one of the things that's always a problem in JavaScript, I'm sure you've all seen this before, is if you're if you're trying to log out a bunch of different keys that go deeper and deeper, and one of them isn't set, you're just going to get an error, and it's going to throw this big, ugly error, right? So if you have, like, um, bar example equals, and that's just an empty object, and then you try to, like, console.log example.foo, something like that. Um, <clears throat> we're we're kind of stuck there. So then if you do foo.bar or something like that, it's going to throw this type error. So it can't, the first one's fine, it just returns undefined, but now you're trying to return a key on undefined and that's a type error in JavaScript. Um, so this is kind of annoying because sometimes you're just trying to check like, you know, if something exists, right? Um, and you can't even get to the point of checking if it exists because it's going to throw this big ugly type error. So a cool thing you can do like I've done here is if it doesn't exist, just return the parent target. So no matter how many of 
you know, baz, bar, bomb, whatever, no matter how many of those you do, uh, at the end of the day, you're still just going to get back. Um, oops. Oh, okay. I see, I see, I see. This one's actually a real key. Um, but anyway, you could do... Oh, I've got all these real keys in here. Cool, there we go. So you could just keep returning um, you know, the, the target back at the end of the day um, and not have those big ugly type errors. So it is a little tricky because if the key's really there um, and then you try to access something undefined on it, it'll throw. But those are pretty cool. There's a lot of powerful stuff you can do with proxies. Um, probably the most common things I do with them is override getters and setters to do some kind of validation.